Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Throwback Thursday. Today I was looking for a box in my inventory and I was like, we haven't done 89 Fleer in a while, so we'll try this one. This is a fun one because not only do you have the Ken Griffey Jr. card to look for, it's his rookie card, you also have the iconic Billy Ripken F-Face Obscenity Bat Knob card where there is literally the, the worst four-letter word you can think of right there in the open on the card. A huge blunder made by Fleer back at the beginning of 1989. So we'll open these packs up and hope that we have one of those early run boxes from the first month or two of production. And if we do, if we do find the Billy Ripken card, it will have a four-letter word on there that you might not want the kiddos seeing. So just a little parental advisory right there. There's also some nice little box panel panel of cards on the bottom. Unfortunately, no crazy good ones there. Will Clark, the best of those four. A lot of times I would cut those out as a kid and save them, but I think I don't really need those. I'll put those off the side. Then we'll see. All right, here we go. There's 660 cards in this set, and you also get a sticker in every pack. 1989, also looking for other decent rookies like John Smoltz and Craig Biggio and Randy Johnson and Gary Sheffield. And there is Nolan Ryan. The Ryan Express is a very nice one. The backs of the cards, pretty basic. You've seen these before. We've done this box once before. And uh, I don't think we found the Billy Ripken last time. So I figured it's been a few years. Let's go ahead and try it again and see what we can do. No Griffey in that pack. Here's the next one up. Mike Smithson starts us off. And did you ever notice with 89 Fleer that the cards have some sort of weird grit on them that they just want to st not stick together, but they're, they're kind of tough to kind of shuffle through them there's wade boggs who's a hall of famer i'll put that in my hall of fame stack wally backman and we've got lance Parrish there as well no gum in 1989 fleer remember gum was only allowed to be put into packs by tops that was their thing and uh, they actually sued fleer and donruss in 1981 because both of the new companies then put gum in their packs and tops like hold on a second that is ours it's Joe Girardi. So the next year, Flair's like, all right, well, what, what can we add to a pack to make it kind of appealing to kids? And they're like, let's put a sticker in there. So that's what they did. And Don Russ went the route of a puzzle piece or three puzzle pieces, I think. Which I think they're both cool. It was nice to have, you know, a little bit of differentiation between the, the three products. There's Bob Walk. Still nothing too crazy in this box. There's Ozzie Smith and Wade Boggs back-to-back. -back. So the Billy Ripken card, I sure hope we can find it. We're finding some of the Orioles here. There's Dave Schmidt and Doug Sisk back-to-back. -back. Got Milt Thompson there as well. Ernie Witt, R.J. Reynolds, for whatever reason, I used to love that card as a kid. I thought, wow, that's a cool card right there. Seeing the stadium a little bit in the background, Three River Stadium. I would have uh, put that in my Pirates binder when I first started collecting cards. I had this green binder, and um, I don't know if it came in like one of those baseball collecting kits or not. There's Tom Glavin, 300 game winner and Hall of Famer. But that ended up being my Pirates binder. Anytime I got a Pirate card, it went right into that binder. And I still have that binder to this day. It's actually over at my parents' house. I should go and grab it so you can see all the 1989 and 1990 Pirates cards in there just for kicks. On to the next pack here. There's Conseco. So a couple Consecos. We had one in the last pack and a second one here as well. Mario Diaz. Again, we're getting some repeats here. And there's another freaking Bob Walk. But Barry Larkin comes out for the first time. Hall of Famer Barry Larkin. And this is a pretty cool card. Triple A's with Big Mac, Mark McGuire, Terry Steinbach. who had some nice offensive seasons from the catching position. And, of course, Jose Conseco, who was... Almost everyone's favorite player around this time. Everybody loved him. Alan Trammell and Roberto Alomar, some Hall of Famers. Still haven't hit any top-notch rookies yet. There is Andre Dawson, another Hall of Famer. Taking all those Hall of Famers out and putting them off to the side. And another Tom Glavin. So 
repeats all over the place. I wonder if these stickers still actually work, by the way. Let's test it out. Cincinnati Red sticker, is it all dried out? Here we go. Here's the test. The red sticker. It's, uh, yeah, they, they're, they don't work anymore. So, <laughs> just have to put that one in the trash. I used to take those and put them on my binders. I think the whole back page of my binder was covered with these Fleer stickers from 89 and 90 Fleer. It's Tony Fernandez. We got a Toy Lavallo rookie card. Curtis Wilkerson, former Pirate. Used to like him as a kid. Brett Saberhagen. I was all about Brett Saberhagen for a while, and it was all because of RBI 1. That's what we called it. I think most of you probably just called it RBI Baseball. We called it RBI 1 because there's other releases of RBI, like RBI 4 for Sega and so on. But in RBI 1, Brett Saberhagen, you couldn't touch him. Basically, if you wanted to win that game, you just were the American League All-Stars. You pitched Brett Saberhagen, who was a side armor in that one, and nobody could touch his nasty, nasty pitches. All you had to do is just start here and just throw the ball like in an angle, and nobody could ever hit it. There is Dennis Eckersley. That would be a good video. Maybe me and my brother playing some NES with RBI 1 baseball. Fleer All-Star team. So this was back before inserts were really kind of a thing. And getting this card, I would have been really pumped about this as a kid because it's, you know, it's something different. It's almost like pulling an autograph back then because back in 1989, a lot of the sets didn't even have inserts. Think about like what, 89 Upper Deck was the cream of the crop. They didn't have any inserts. They had those... You know, those checklist cards, which kind of look like inserts, but they're really actually part of the set. Tops just had all 792 base cards. Same thing with Donruss. I guess with Donruss, they had those Grand Slammer cards, which I thought were really cool. If you bought, like, a jumbo pack, that was kind of like getting an insert. And those MVP cards, I think, were technically inserts as well as they were their own different set. But that was a pretty cool thing back then. I don't remember what the odds of finding one of those are. I don't know if there even were any printed odds on those Fleer All-Star Team cards. And we are still Billy Ripkinless. There's Jerry Gleaton. I always knew him as Jerry Don Gleaton. I don't know where the Don went on that card. They left it off. All right, here we go with this next one. We got a Brewers sticker right there. They've been playing some great baseball of late. There's Terry Steinbach once again. Barry Bonds. Very nice card right there. I used to like this one as a kid. Barry Bonds was one of my favorite players. He wasn't my favorite player when he was with the Pirates. But he was always one of my top like two or three favorite players. And when he went to the Giants after the 1992 season, I hated him. For a full season, I hated Barry Bonds. I felt like he was a backstabbing, money-grubbing just SOB, and uh, and then, wouldn't you know it, I would go on to just actually just be in awe of his ability and would become a fan again. Got a Brady Anderson rookie card. Jerry Royce trying out the lumber there at age, like, 70. Jerry Royce always looked super old to me, suffered from Charlie Huff disease. Charlie Huff also looking much older than he actually was. There's Vince Coleman, who once was injured by a tarp. A, a, a robo tarp i think ended his season one year maybe in philadelphia the old veteran stadium i think it was where a robo tarp there's ryan sandberg electronic tarp that would roll itself out just started rolling itself out and uh, kind of crushed vince coleman's leg we've got roberto alomar right there with sandy alomar jr that would have been a nice card back in the day everybody was all about sandy alomar as well and where the heck is Ken Griffey Jr. and Billy Ripken? Man, I hope this isn't a search box. I don't think it is because of the uh, a good amount of decent cards that we've pulled so far. But we have not really found any top-notch rookies. There's Fred McGriff. I guess the top two would be, what, Randy Johnson? There's Tim Raines, who's a Hall of Famer. The Randy Johnson does have a shot of being the error card with the unsightly background of a big old Marlboro cigarette ad right over Johnson's shoulder. They blacked that ad out. So that's another nice 
Chase that we might be able to find. There's Jose Uribe, Brian Fisher. And another insert here, it's Will Clark. There's only 12 of these cards, and we've pulled two of them already. So I guess they're not all that rare, but still pretty cool to hit an insert in 1989. There's Doug Drabeck, former Cy Young Award winner right there. And Danny Darwin is the last one. We're about halfway through the box. Not a whole lot to show in terms of rookies. The whole reason I'm doing this box is to find the Griffey with a chance of finding the Billy Ripken error card and a bonus of maybe finding a Randy Johnson. And hopefully the Randy Johnson has that obscenity on it. There's Ramon Hernandez. Just add him to the list of failed top-notch prospects that never really worked out to be Hall of Famers or superstars. Now, a lot of those guys did have great careers, but um, their cards would go way down in value and eventually become commons. Harold Baines, in fact, was a common all throughout my childhood. If I saw a Harold Baines card, I'd just toss in the common pile, and wouldn't you know it, he would go on to be a Hall of Famer because he was a compiler. He would play a long time and just add up the stats. Was always a decent to above average player. Never a superstar, but he got into the Hall of Fame, so that one goes in my Hall of Fame stack that I'm building here. Every time I see a Brewers logo, I think maybe it's the Gary Sheffield rookie card, but no, it's Odell Jones. There's Mackie Sasser. And we've got, I used to like this card as a kid just for Bobby Bow. I think I feel like the first home run I ever saw in person at a Major League Baseball game was hit by Bobby Boney. I can still remember it was a laser line drive over the fence to left field, probably in 1989. I think that was my first Major League game. And there's Chris Sabo, who kind of ruins the card. I was never a Chris Sabo fan. I used to hate those rec specs that he would wear. I don't know. If that's what uh, is that? Is that even the right term for those rec specs? That's what we call them here in Western Pennsylvania, recreational um, spectacles. I guess I don't know. There's Sid Bream. Basically, people would wear them. If they're doing recreational activities, so I don't know who coined that phrase, but we called it rec specs. Nothing going on there. There's Goose Gossage, who is a Hall of Famer. The Goose. All right, next pack up. Still, where is our guy Ken Griffey Jr.? There's Tom Prince. Probably one of my least favorite pirates during that era. I used to hate Tom Prince, and I also used to hate Junior Ortiz, who was another backup catcher. There's Roger Clemens. Maybe it was just me and backup catchers. I didn't like them because they didn't play that much, so I just didn't think they were that good as a kid. Don Baylor, Steve Jeltz, and Jeff Musselman there. All right, coming up next, we've got Eric Davis. I used to mimic his batting stance in the backyard with those low hands down near the waist. That's a nice one there with Kirby Puckett, Hall of Famer Kirby Puckett. There's Bob Horner. Looks like he should be an usher instead of in the batting cage. Howard Johnson, Ron Hassey. There. There's Ricky Henderson in his Yankees uniform, one of the greatest of all time. In fact, He's probably the best leadoff hitter ever. I'm trying to think of somebody who would be a better leadoff hitter all around than Ricky Henderson. Ricky Henderson would get on base like crazy. He had the all-time walk career record until Barry Bonds came along and broke it. Of course, Bonds, nobody wanted to face Bonds, so he got walked. Just a lot of that was intentionally. There's Dante Bichette, Bo Bichette's dad. And Dante Bichette was a decent player, and that was his rookie card right there. There's Tony Gwynn, Hall of Famer Tony Gwynn. I wonder why they came up with this design, by the way. Just just boring gray background with some lines on it. Like, who's like they couldn't come up with a better design than that. There's Robin Yount. I actually don't really even mind it that much, but I'm just looking at it. It's so simple, so basic. It's to me, it's it's 89 Fleer for sure. That's kind of the thing. Flair had some questionable design, um, designs that they've put out during this era. There is Jose Canseco, so that's our third all-star team card. So we got three of those inserts. Slowly putting the set together of those all-stars, and now we have our first big rookie. 
Now, John Smoltz, rookie card. John Smoltz, he's a Hall of Famer. And this card is not worth a ton of money. You may even be able to find this for a buck or two at a card show. But it's still nice to get a Hall of Fame rookie card of Smoltz. John Smoltz. Hall of Famer, there's Mike Lavalier. So, all right, we're on a little bit of a roll here now. Now, can we find the Billy Ripken and Ken Griffey Jr.? But some designs, like the 90 Fleer design, I wasn't a big fan of. I don't know what they were thinking in 1991. 91 Fleer may have been one of the worst looking designs ever. They were just like, well, let's just make the whole card like super bright yellow. But some people like it, but not me. We've got Will Clark right there. Bruce Suter, he's a Hall of Famer. Felix Fermin, another backup pirate. Hey, there it is, Ken Griffey Jr. So, for a while there, I was like, oh, man, do we have a search box here? Where's Griffey? Where's Billy Ripken? Where's John Smoltz? Where's Randy Johnson? Well, now they're starting to come out. And we've got the best card in the entire set right here. Hall of Fame rookie card. Ken Griffey Jr., one of the greatest players of this era. In fact, a lot of people would argue he was the greatest player of the, uh, you know, the 90s. Had an absolutely fantastic decade. Then, of course, after the 90s were over, he went to Cincinnati. And then just injuries got the best of him. I'm kind of starting to see some parallels, actually, between Ken Griffey Jr.'s career and Mike Trout's career. Mike Trout... A lot of talk about him being one of the best ever, best of the generation for the last 10 years. He's just been healthy and putting up huge numbers every year, finishing as the top vote-getter for MVP or top three many, many years. And, you know, the last you know few years, it's just been a rough go for Mike Trout. It looks like this year it might be over for him and uh, – just actually put up his worst season since his rookie year this year. But that Ken Griffey Jr. is a great card. I love this card. And that one is going to be the number one card of the video unless we find a Randy Johnson with the Marlboro cigarette ad still visible, visible or if we can find the Billy Ripken obscenity card, which I'm really hoping for. We'll see. There's also different variations of that Billy Ripken. So they kind of went through different phases of trying to correct the error on the printing plates or whatever. There's a Don Mattingly. He's not a Hall of Famer, but I put him in my Hall of Fame pile. Mike Schmidt right there. That Don, Ma Don Mattingly cards are worth more than probably half of the Hall of Famers. I could probably list a bunch of Hall of Famers that are worth less than Don Mattingly. And a lot of them in the stack would be worth less, like Goose Gossage and Bruce Suter and Burt Blylev and Tim Raines, Harold Baines. Lee Smith, and so on and so forth. All right, so there's Kevin Brown rookie card first. $100 million man. He would end up with the Yankees, of course. The Yankees just kind of have a have a habit of taking on bad contracts. They took on the first $200 million man, too. A-Rod and the first $300 million man, which was John Carlos Stanton. Even though they didn't dole out any of those contracts, they got stuck with them all. And Jason Dominguez should be coming up soon. I think he's supposed to be called up today. So I'm going to have to go after this video is over. I'm going to go and check on the Yankees and see what's going on there and see if I can check out Dominguez's major league debut. There's Eddie Murray. There's no auction tonight, by the way. I'm going to go ahead and postpone the auction until Sunday. We have a consignment coming in, but it's not quite in yet. I think it's going to be here tomorrow. And, um,. Also, I'll take that opportunity to rest up a little bit. It's the first full week back at school, it's been, uh, you know, always pretty tiring for me. I've got some stuff to ship, so I figure I'll take advantage of the time and get some work done and then get to bed a little earlier tonight and get a little bit of extra rest. I'll be back tomorrow for Face Off Friday. Ted Power used to be a former pirate. I used to hate Ted Power, and I don't know why. Maybe it was his curly hair. Just as a kid, there were certain reasons why I just didn't like certain players. I, I think I thought Ted Power looked a little bit like a, a scary clown, I think. Here's the next pack up. You can always see, by the way, what the sticker is on top. So as a kid, I would have went right for the Pirates sticker pack and grabbed that one. You can do that with a lot of packs back in the 80s. 
you could look right through the wrapper. There's Paul Molitor, who's a Hall of Famer. Bo Jackson, very nice card right there. Bo Jackson, not a Hall of Famer because of that injury. Unfortunately, we only got to see Bo's greatness for a few seasons before his hip blew out. And that was that. Roger McDowell and Glenn Hubbard there as well. Would have Bo Jackson been a Hall of Famer? Maybe. It's tough to say. He only really had, what, th maybe three years before the injury. But he was, uh, man, he just showed his athletic ability every single day. There it is, Randy Johnson, the Randy Johnson rookie card. And the cigarette ad is blacked out. So right here is a big ad that says Marlboro cigarettes. And they don't want to really, you know, push that out to kids since most back in 89, the hobby was mostly dominated by kids buying packs of cards. Now things have changed. It's mostly adults buying cards as they're much more expensive now. And uh, no, unfortunately, no cigarette ad. But hey, it's another Hall of Fame rookie card. It's Randy Johnson. We'll take it. And put that in the good pile. So we got the top two rookies. There's still a couple that we're missing. We haven't seen Craig Biggio yet. Haven't seen Gary Sheffield yet either. We'll see if they're going to be coming out here. Here's this next pack. There's Kirby Puckett on the back. Still looking for Billy Ripken. I'm a little bit worried that if we do find Billy Ripken, it will be corrected since that Randy Johnson is corrected. There's Ted Simmons. Man, does Ted Simmons look old. He looks like he's about like 48 in the coach, and he got into the Hall of Fames somehow. He was always, just look at all these years he played. He played a long time, primarily at catcher, also played first base, but 2,400 hits. I think this is his final ever card. I don't remember a 1990 Ted Simmons card, but if you look at his career stats, 248 home runs, which is pretty respectable, uh, 2,400 hits. There's other players playing right now that, have bested those numbers and might not get to the Hall of Fame, so we'll see. There's Bobby Bow, so our fourth All Star team card, Bobby Bow, right there. We're almost putting the whole set together. It'd be nice if we could, but it's not going to happen. We've got four. My brother's favorite player, right there. I don't know why he was so drawn to Jose Lind, but he was. And uh, there's Kirby Puckett right there, which is the last one. Jose Lind, a light hitting second baseman, great defense, just never had much power. And uh, my brother absolutely loved him. It's just cool. Always nice to have a, you know, kind of a unique favorite player that you PC. There is the pirate sticker. Raphael Palmero. Here's Hall of Famer and cover boy of the box. It is Gary Carter. Put that in the Hall of Fame stack. Ron Gant. I think there's something sticking there. Unfortunately, it's Steve Buschel. I remember the Pirates traded for Steve Buschel and. I feel like we were, like, really excited for some reason. Like, wow, we got Steve Bouchelle. Like, it was a huge deal. Steve Bouchelle was probably, at best, just a little bit above average at that time. There's Carlton Fisk, another Hall of Famer. Unfortunately, we're down to just four packs left in this Billy Ripken bat knob obscenity search. All right, here we go with the next one. I don't think I've ever seen or heard of Jack Lazorko ever. Where did that guy even come from? I never heard of him before. Every now and then, somebody works their way in that maybe only had one card ever made of him. And I've never noticed him before. Good old Jack Lazorko. Almost sounds like a completely made-up name. And in this pack, unfortunately, no Billy Ripken. Also, haven't seen the Cal Ripken Jr. yet. Billy's brother. Still missing Craig Bishop. Another 660 cards in the set, so you're not going to see every card in a box. There's Cecil Fielder. And what else do we have? Nothing happening yet here. Charlie Huff. Name dropped him a little while ago. And man, we're down to two packs. Two packs left here. Thanks for joining us for this Throwback Thursday tonight, by the way, everybody. Hope you're all having a very pleasant Thursday. Again, tomorrow I hope to bring you a face-off Friday. I'm waiting on some Cosmic Chrome, and I'm planning to do Cosmic Chrome against Topps Chrome Jumbo. They're both about $400 a box. We'll see if I can get one of each of those. Dave LaPointe, I actually I bought something at an auction from Dave LaPointe. No, it was a gift from Dave LaPointe's wife, who 
I guess they ended up getting divorced, and all of David Point's memorabilia went to this auction house. And I ended up getting some of it. And it's kind of strange. There's Jay Buhner. And there it is, Billy Ripkin, the bat knob card. We found it. All right. So, unfortunately, I guess this is, you know, a win-lose. The lose is it's not the obscenity card with the F word on it. But the good news is if you have kiddos in the room, you don't have to hide their eyes. So the, the story of this iconic card of Billy Ripken was he was going out to a batting practice and he just uh, grabbed a bat and to make sure he could find his bat, he just wrote something stupid on the card and he wrote F face on it so that he would know it was his. And then when he went out there, the photographer at Fleer pulled him to the side and said, hey, let me snap your picture real quick. And Billy didn't even think anything about it. He's like, all right. And so he just posed right there after he, I think he like did around, ran around the bases, came home uh, to take his second round. And this picture was taken in between and snapped the picture and thought nothing of it, went back to playing. And then I guess, you know, a few months later when 89 Fleer came out, this card came in with F face clearly visible to all the kids and man it created a big firestorm over this card a lot of people hated Billy Ripken for it as a kid I felt like this guy was I felt like he was a criminal actually I literally felt Billy Ripken was a criminal and I hated him as a kid because he had that word on there and obviously you know that couldn't be farther from the truth Billy Ripken's a great guy he's a great analyst uh, you've probably seen him on is he still on MLB Network but Overall, great dude, just kind of, it just happened. And so Fleer corrected the air, and then this card, the air card, became extremely valuable as everybody was buying 89 Fleer looking for it because when they correct airs, it makes them more valuable because it creates some hype. People want that card. It creates demand. And also, the supply gets cut off. There's no more cards being printed once they correct it. So depending on how early in the print run they correct a card, the earlier they correct it, the less copies there are, the more it's worth. Just look at the 1990 no name on front, Frank Thomas rookie card. They caught that one real early. There's very few copies out there of that, and that card is worth extremely high amounts of money. We're talking thousands and thousands of dollars just for like even like a low-grade PSA 6. I think one sold recently for like six grand in PSA 6. But there it is, the Bill Ripken obscenity card. So <laughs> we got it, but unfortunately, it is the corrected version. So the only way you can find the F face card, you got to find a box that was printed earlier. And I guess you can tell on the cases, there's like quality control numbers on some cases. And if you know what to look out for, there's Daryl Strawberry, Dave Winfield. You can grab an early case with, and you'll just guarantee yourself Billy Ripken cards will be in there. And Oral Hershiser, who probably should have got another look for the Hall of Fame. So there you have it, folks. That is 1989 Fleer. It was fun going through that and taking a little trip down memory lane and looking for the Billy Ripken error card along with Ken Griffey Jr. We found both the cards. Unfortunately, no error cards in this one. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a great rest of your Thursday night. Again, no auction tonight as I'll be heading to bed a little bit earlier and trying to rest up and recuperate and then also get some stuff done around the house and then maybe check on Jason Dominguez and see what's going on there. So have a great rest of your evening and I will see you all tomorrow for Face Off Friday. Good night, everybody.